What is up, my exchange family from all over the world, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osbin, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my wonderful co-host, Leah Matthews. How you doing, Leah? Hi, Chief. Doing good. And then I, we have a special <laughs> guest co-host today, uh, Chris Ward. Now, Chris is a huge soccer fan, and he also uh, one of the kind of behind-the-scenes uh teammates that uh, make sure Chief Chat goes without a hitch. So we actually brought him in front of the camera this time and uh, super excited to have him on the show. So welcome, Chris. Thanks, Chief. It's great to be here. So I'm super excited about today's guest because we have a world-class athlete that is, is pretty tired because uh, she had a game last night. <laughs> but <laughs> but but she but she she's going to groove through this and she's going to get through this interview and we're going to get to know her a little bit better. So uh, without further ado, Chris, please introduce today's guest. Thanks, Chief. Today's guest is a mainstay on the U.S. Women's National Team. He's been a member of two World Cup winning sides, has a gold medal, and is just named to her third Olympic team. Please join me in a big Chief Chat welcome for Kelly O'Hara. Hey. Thanks for having me, guys. It's nice to be here. And I'm not too tired, Chief. Don't tell them that I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> <She's> <laughs> my secret. Listen, yeah. we, to we totally understand. Trust me, we totally understand. <laughs> Well, Kelly, uh, thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. We really appreciate it. And everybody watching, you know what to do. Drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Share your love with Kelly. Any questions you have, we will read those live. Um, follow us and enable your notifications so you stay in the know about our lineup. Chief Chats are every week. We have a military exclusive lineup for you all summer. So Kelly, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're super thrilled to have you with us and uh, congratulations on you making your third Olympic games. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's crazy to hear that be said, my third Olympic games, it's kind of, it's a bit wild. I never would have thought this is how far I'd come, but um, it's exciting to be a part of another Olympic roster. Well, that, that means you're officially an OG, uh, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Something like that. So, can you tell us uh, where you're joining us from today? Yeah, so we're um, in Hartford, Connecticut, right now. Um, like you said, Chief, we had a game last night. We played Mexico. I think it was 4-0. Um, so we have, yeah, we played last night, and then we have another game on the fifth, and then we fly to Tokyo on the seventh. So we're just up here, um, getting ready for for heading over to Tokyo, and then you know, getting into it once we get over there. Absolutely. Uh oh. Lose Lee. Lee. Lee, are you there? Yeah. I'm here. Chief. Oh, I think I think it's on you, Leah. <laughs> oh, so sorry, y'all. Leah, yeah, what you got? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Leah, it's your cue. Leah, it's your it's your turn, Leah. <laughs> Chief chat on a Friday, man, my brain is not in this today. My brain's like, this is not chief chat day. What are you doing? Okay, oh, no. sorry. Is this, a, is this a different day? You guys typically do it? It is, yes, mm. yeah. But it's okay. We were happy to host you, so we wanted to make it work. So Absolutely. Really so this, is, this is scripted and unscripted all at the same time. So just... <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> Okay, so Kelly, uh, what age did you start playing soccer? And then when did you realize this might be something that you could make a career out of? Yeah, so I started playing soccer when I was four years old. I was just a little girl and my parents were like, you need to go burn off energy, put me in, you know, Muppet soccer and, and started playing at that age. And it was the one sport that I played consistently um, through my childhood. I played a bunch of different sports growing up anything from like I did triathlons to ballet gymnastics swimming track and field I tried softball for a season was like this is not it uh, <laughs> did basketball soccer so um was just very competitive um very active but soccer was definitely the one sport like I said that was consistent through growing up and I don't know when I probably realized or thought that I could go far I think maybe when I got called into my first um, youth national team camp when I was a sophomore in, in high school. Um, that was kind of a little bit of validation that like, okay, I'm on the right track. Um, and, and with that call up came a lot of opportunity in terms of colleges and scholarships and that sort of thing. So I think that 
that was maybe my first thought of, oh, I could potentially, you know, I'm, I'm in at the youth level. Maybe one day I can make it to the full team. And um, sure enough, worked out. Wow. So in, in college, you played forward, you won the Herman Trophy, which is basically the equivalent of the equivalent of the Heisman Trophy. So kind of a big deal. Uh, <laughs> then, you joined the, then you joined the national team and you switched to, to defender. So how, how daunting was that to switch positions at that level? Yeah. Um, so I played forward my whole life. And like you said, played it through college into my professional career. And then probably, you know, I graduated college in um, 2010 and then was on the, made it onto the national team or got my first call up, um, or I guess second call up right around the time I stopped playing or was done playing college soccer. And, and my first year and a half on the full team, I was playing forward, outside, mid, that sort of thing. And and that was 2010, 2011, and then going into 2012, which was going to be or would potentially be my first opportunity at making Olympics. Um, Pia, the coach at the time of the national team, pulled me aside and was like, listen, you're not making this team except at outside back. And I was like, are you sure you pulled the right player over here? You know, what? Do you, I don't play outside. I'm not a defender. Um, but I was like, you know what? If that's my only opportunity to make this team, I'm going to make it work and I'm going to grind every single day to to be able to play this position and play it well and it was extremely daunting I, I still very vividly remember learning the position and, and preparing for the 2012 Olympics as an outside back and I basically just approached every day and went into every practice and thought like okay what is the one thing I could work on today and what what is one thing that I could add to my you know toolbox as an outside back because it's quite empty right now. So I need to, I need to get better and, and learn this position. So I just, I kind of just took it bite by bite and um, step by step and day by day and really tried not to get too ahead of myself or too um, overwhelmed with the prospect of having to play this new position and, you know, eventually figured out. And I had some really great coaches um, helping me along the way and teammates too. So I think that helped a lot. That's awesome. That's uh, definitely the definition of taking one for the team, right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm like, so that's how, that's how it goes with this team. I'm like, you you want me to you want me to play, you know, goalie? All right, I'll, I'll figure it out. It's just yeah. uh, I want to be on the field. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so playing for one's country is like the ultimate goal for most soccer players, right? And so what does it mean that you've uh, been able to kind of represent the country on a global stage? And this is going to be like, well, your third, fourth, fifth time uh, doing that. So how does that feel? it's incredible. You know, it, it's, it is the pinnacle of the sport of any sport really is to represent, I think your country on that global stage. And, and it just has so much meaning to it because you truly are, you know, you're wearing your country's colors, you're wearing the red, white, and blue, and you're representing everyone back home, you know, every single person. And it's, it's just, it's a, it's a very, very big honor. Um, and something that still to this day gives me goosebumps and, and, you know, kind of just, it's like, it's just a crazy thing to think about. We were, we were pulling into the stadium last night in Hartford and, um, and there's so many people out tailgating and, and getting ready and seeing everybody in red, white, and blue and, you know, faces painted and people partying and getting excited and, and that sort of thing to just be like, our fan base is just so incredible. And, and to represent the entire country, it's just a, it's a great honor. So um, something I, I feel very lucky I get to do. Yeah, I, I kind of put it, I look at like the NBA or NFL, like you just, you normally have your, your state kind of uh, cheering for you, but you got yeah. 330 million plus in your country freaking cheering for you. So that's, that's, that's gotta be an awesome feeling. Yeah, it's definitely a powerful thing for sure. And Kelly, you're best known for your incredible accomplishments on the field. So can you narrow it down? Do you have a favorite moment from your career? Um, I think winning a gold medal in 2012 was pretty special uh, because that was my first major tournament win. And as a kid, I always watched the Olympics and thought Olympians are so cool and, you know, gold medalists, like what an honor and how amazing it would be to be one of those and ha like have my own gold medal. Um, so I think that was a really special moment. Um, and I was super young too. So it was just, and with the changing of positions and everything that was really cool. And, um, and I, I, I scored my first goal for this team, which is a little sad, a little funny, 
not until 2015 World Cup because he scored a lot of goals growing up and in college and then like took me forever to score <laughs> with this team. So it was a bit of like, yeah, funny moment, but also really cool. It was during the 2015 uh, World Cup semifinals and I scored, I came in as a sub, scored a goal against Germany that brought us to 2-0 and um, kind of secured our spot in that, in that final. So, and it was my first goal. So it was just like, I was going crazy. And, wow. and also, like, I can't believe it took this long, but if I'm going to score, it might as well be a semifinal of a world cup. So uh, yeah, that was cool too. On the clean sheet too, as a, as a defender, that's a, that's a bonus as well. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. So Kelly, as, as a professional athlete, injuries are just part of the job. They're inev- inevitable. And you had a, your fair share of them before the 2019 World Cup. So how did you handle that adversity? And how do you still support your team and, co- and con- contribute even when you're not being, being able to be on the field? Yeah, I think uh, injuries are probably one of the worst things athletes go through in their careers. You know, they're, they're inevitable. You're, you're, if you don't get injured, you're a very, very, very lucky person um, as a professional athlete. But for me... I have had a handful of, you know, significant injuries, surgeries, that sort of thing. And I've always, I've always let myself one, get down in the dumps about it for, for a small period of time, like let myself feel bummed out and then approach it kind of like I approach the, the moving positions type of thing. It's like, you just got to go day by day, step by step, and you can't get ahead of yourself and, and worry, you know, too far down the road. You just have to be like, what can I accomplish today? And I think in 2019, I definitely did that. And I had to because I had a very different expectation of what my preparation was going to look like going into the 2019 World Cup. I thought I was going to be playing consistently in games, that sort of thing. And I was out for a majority of the lead up into that tournament. And what I actually did was a lot of visualization um, just so that I knew I couldn't be physically on the field, but I, I thought to myself, mentally, I can go through these and I can work through different scenarios that I, that I'd encounter on the field. Um, and I think that actually really helped me once I was able to get back on the field. Um, and then in terms of just, you know, supporting your team, they're out there able to play and doing their job and fighting. So you just have to be as supportive as possible. And, you know, like that's, that's the reality of like team sports. you got to be best teammate for everyone who is stepping on the field on that day. So um, I always try to be a really good hype teammate and get, get people excited and, and support regardless of, you know, if I'm playing, if I'm injured, if I'm on the bench, if I'm not even on the roster, like at the end of the day, um, it's about getting the W so support however I can. And I would, I would assume that your teammates also played a big role in, in you being able to come back from those injuries, supporting you. I mean, I, For I, sure. from watching this team, it feels like it's kind of just like a big family. And so probably that, that, that helped probably a little bit, right? You definitely, definitely, you know, anytime somebody is out with a major injury, it's, you know, you, you can, you can feel all your teammates pooling for you that you're going to get back in time, that you're going to be ready, that sort of thing. And, and I think that's something that's very special about this team. Yeah. And I'm kind of glad you uh, kind of told us kind of your story of kind of resiliency, because, you know, in the military, we, we have to uh, learn resiliency and, and and then having our teammates rally around us when we're kind of down in the dumps. But like you saying, allowing yourself to kind of say, you know what, this does suck and, and, and give you that space, you know, give you the opportunity to, to, to say it sucks and feel that it sucks and then, then come out of it uh, on top. So thank Absolutely. you for that story. Yeah. So, so eating well plays a huge role in athletic performance. And so uh, I'm not the best uh, person in nutrition. I'm supposed to be because I'm in the military and we're supposed to be lean, mean fighting machines. But uh, okay. so, so can you give us some pointers on what's your approach to nutrition? And uh, do you like keep to a, a strict diet or is there some type of philosophy that you have on healthy eating? Yeah, so I, I definitely don't um, have a strict diet, but I will say that food and sleep are probably your best tools for recovery. So even if you're as a professional athlete or just you know in the military or like normal civilian, that is those are the two things that you can control and sometimes and. Um, I think have the biggest impact on overall overall well-being, physical well-being. Um, so when it comes to food, my approach is 
eat as much whole food as possible. So I eat predominantly plant-based. Um, I'm definitely not vegan or vegetarian or anything like that, but I try to eat as many or as much nutrient dense food as possible. So a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruit, whole grains, beans, um, that sort of thing. And then, um, you know, quality protein, uh, animal protein. But I, I, I would say I eat, I don't eat a lot of, of meat, but I, I still do eat it because I know that it's, it's, um, it's important and, and it has its benefits as well. So, um, but that being said, I am a sugar monster. I have a terrible sweet tooth oh, and yeah. it's something that I have to like rein in and control and get a hold of, because if I don't, I'll just have like five cookies a day and it's, it's not good. Like you just, it's just not a good, <laughs> so I also what, what- love I also love fried chicken. So those are like my, my vices for sure. When it comes to. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to ask you, uh, like what, what's your, what's your cheat meal or guilty pleasure yeah. or whatever it is. I that love you... a good, a fried chicken sandwich. Oh, like spicy oh. fried chicken sandwich. Yeah. Real good. So is a Popeye's or Chick-fil-A, which one are we going with? Ooh, um, Chick-fil-A. I just Chick-fil-A? think combo number one, <laughs> like you can't go wrong with the combo number one. <laughs> <laughs> right <Yeah. there>. Yes. <laughs> uh. Okay, and Kelly, <clears throat> talking about military, you have a strong connection to the military, and we understand your father was a Navy pilot, and now your brother is as well. So we have soldiers, airmen, guardians, sailors, Marines, Coast Guard members, and military families watching from all over the world. What words of inspiration or thanks can you offer all of our heroes? Oh, man. Um I mean, I would just a big thank you. Like, I, the amount of sacrifice it is to be in the military um, is incredible. And I hope that all of our servicemen and women know how grateful I am, we are, um, that they, that y'all sacrifice day in and day out for us. So um, truly indebted to, to all of our servicemen and women. And, and on top of that, I would say, thank you to the, to the family members. You know, there's a sacrifice that comes with having uh, a parent or a sibling um, or a partner that is in the military and is gone. Um, so thank you, just a big thank you. And, and, and I hope you guys know how much um, you are appreciated and, and we're so thankful. Well said. <laughs> Hey, Kelly, so the national team, women's national team draws big crowds everywhere they go. Last night, an example, it's pouring down rain and the place is packed. Um, a lot of those fans are, are younger girls who play soccer and really look up to the players. How does being a role model affect you? Oh, man, another good question. Um, it's funny. I used to think when I first got on this team, I was like, you know, our, our press officer, Hype, he would, he'd be like, oh, you know, you're an inspiration for all these people and all these things. And I was like, no, I'm just, I'm just playing soccer. Like I'm just having fun. I'm getting to do my dream job. Um, but I have come to understand the responsibility and, and um, the ability that we do have to inspire and impact um, not only young girls, but truly like across the spectrum, young boys, girls, grown men, women. Um, it is really special that you know, I get to, to do something I love every single day. And by doing that and doing it well, um, it can have an impact on people and it can inspire people to, to be their best selves and, and to, you know, achieve their dreams. Not that it's necessarily going to be maybe representing their country on the world stage, but it could be something in a job or in, in school or something like that. So, um, it's a, it's a really special thing. It's something that I don't take lightly. And, and I, it's, yeah, it's just, it is, it is very, very cool. So I, I definitely do um, I take some responsibility in that for sure. So we, Kelly, we're getting a lot of comments and questions from our viewers. So we want to oh. just take a second to pause uh, and read some of the feedback to you. So All right. um, we have, we have lots of people that are saying, uh, go USA, um, go for the gold. We also definitely. have... Uh, Mark Matthews, who says Peyton in Midlothian loves you. Oh, my Peyton. Um, so that's right outside of Dallas. Um, Ed, Ed Velasquez says, is there a different training regiment for the Olympics? Mm. Um, 
No, not really. So th- the one thing about the Olympics is, um, it's definitely not a different training regimen, but it is a different beast in terms of physical preparation in that the Olympics, the, the, you play six games over basically two weeks. Whereas, um, and so you're basically playing a game every three days, which is like really hard. Yeah. Um, and then the world cup is seven games over basically a little over a month. So you play every four to five days. So the world cup, it, it's very difficult to win. Um, but I would say the Olympics is probably more physically demanding. It's also a smaller roster. So, um, there hasn't been, I don't, I don't think we necessarily maybe prepared differently. I think the only thing is probably national team or U S soccer will, I think has purposely scheduled games in the similar cadence that will be the Olympics. Whereas we probably wouldn't do that. Um, if it wasn't for the Olympics. So I'd say that's the only thing. Excellent. And then Mary and a couple people are asking, um, if you get nervous or get butterflies before you take the field. Um, I actually got asked this the other day and Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I still get nervous. Like I definitely get very stressed about winning and games (laughs) and, 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 um, you know, performing and that sort of thing. Um, but it's, it's a different kind of nervous. I, in, in the beginning of my career, I, I would get very nervous and I almost once passed out going into a game. Like I <laughs> oh, no. felt myself blacking out. So I was like, I should not be doing this right now. Um, but it's, it's a, it's a nervous because you don't know what the outcome's going to be at the end of the day. It's a sport it, there. The, it could go either way. Even if you play the best game of your life, you could still potentially lose. So I think that's what makes me nervous. Um, but I feel so much more prepared than I did, you know, years ago, I have experience. Mm -hmm. So I feel the nervousness of like, we're about to play a big game. Like there's a lot on the line, but I feel very prepared and and excited in that way. So I think that it kind of, I channel it towards more of excitement and like um, adrenaline. Excellent. And then um, from Chiefs page, we have Michelle who says, happy Friday. Hello from Arizona. I am so excited for you. And Sean is asking, how was playing in the rain yesterday and how much confidence did that solid victory give the team going into the road to Tokyo? The rain was a lot. It was probably the heaviest rain we've played in in a while. Um, But shout out to the crowd in Hartford. They stuck around. They were loud. They were rowdy the whole time. So big time performance from that crowd. Um, we definitely could feel it. And it, it meant a lot to have everybody just grind it out. I was like, I would have gone home in the 15th minute. If I <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a pretty miserable atmosphere, but they made it super electric and um, exciting. And I think that um, we obviously, we won 4-0 last night uh, on that score sheet. I think it, that it looks really good. I think I know I have a lot of things I need to, to tune up and sharpen before we kick off in Tokyo. So um, I think that the team's feeling good, but I know personally, I, I have another level that I need to get to and and I'm going to be honing in on that in the next two and a half weeks. Let's talk a little bit about your, your podcast that you host just women's sports. Can you tell us how you got involved with it and the message that you hope to convey through it? Yeah. So, um, I have a podcast called, or I host a podcast called just women sports with Kelly O'Hara and, um, just women sports is a, is a digital media platform. And as you can tell from the name, it covers just women sports. Uh, (laughs) the founder Haley Rosen is a Stanford grad as well. So, um, and she played soccer there. So we got connected through friends and she was bringing on in the beginning professional athletes to help guide the company and kind of be on a, athlete board. And in our initial conversation, I was asking her what she envisioned the company becoming. And she brought up, you know, she'd love to do podcasts, get into the audio space. And I was like, Oh, I love podcasts. And she said, well, do you want to host this one? And I was like, I've I've never hosted a podcast. Are you sure you want me to? (laughs) But uh, she eventually convinced me to and, and it's been really, it's been incredible. It's been so cool. I've, I've, the, the premise of the show is I sit down with a new athlete each week and um, they, I walk or, you know, together we walk through their journey and their, and their lives in, in their athletic careers. 
And I've gotten to interview so many incredible athletes and have such amazing conversations. And I've just, it's been, I'm like, how did I luck out to get this job? It's been so cool. So um, if you haven't checked it out, definitely check it out. There's some really great, great conversations on there and incredible athletes. Um, and I learned so much, even just getting to talk to them each week. So it's been really cool. So, so Kelly, if, if, if uh, Chris asked me that exact same question about this show, I would have the exact same answer. Like, really? you, you just, you, cause, cause like I said, I came into the job, not knowing that I, yeah. that, that they had a podcast set up and I had to kind of take over the show once the, uh, the other chief uh, PCS to another uh, duty station. And like I said, I've been able to talk to some really cool people like yourself. And uh, it's just, you know, I just never envisioned myself to be a podcast host or whatever the same, case may be. Same. Yeah, but, no, it's cool. But no, but best of luck on your podcast. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Um, a big shout out to your, your dad and your brother for, for their sacrifice and their service to this country. And like you said, your family that, uh, that sacrificed along the way. Uh, we, we wish you all the best. I, I know we know you got a, a tight schedule today. Probably got to get some sleep because uh, when, when you when you mentioned eating and sleeping, I felt bad. I was like, oh crap. <laughs> I said we. we it's okay. It's okay. This has been fun. This has been I'm fun. messing with you. Mm -hmm. No, nah, but it, it was a great interview. We had a, we had a great time talking to you. Uh, we wish you and your teammates all the best, and we'll be right here supporting you uh, in the Olympics as Team USA brings home another goal. We're gonna put that into the atmosphere. We're gonna put yes. that in. The, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. We are gonna name it and claim it. I so, love uh, it. So, but, th but this means so much to our airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, uh, guardians, and Coast Guard members uh, throughout the world. And we just want to say thank you. Well, thank you guys, Leah, Chris, Chief. This has been awesome. And um, again, big thank you to everybody who's listening and watching all of um, the servicemen and women out there. From the bottom of my heart, thank you guys. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, thank you. And uh, Chief Chat out. Chief Chat out. out. <laughs> Bye.